And I, and, and I want you to, to start from back five years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Praise God. Come on. I feel the glory yeah. in the house. Yeah. The fire. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. 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 Feel him, Lord. I love Jesus so much. Yes. He's so wonderful. I'm going to tell you. So I've been a Christian like eight years, right? Got delivered of depression and suicide at an altar call, you know, several altar calls at a Christian conference in Colorado Springs eight years ago, right? Seven, eight years ago. And, uh, you know, I didn't know Jesus like that. I thought Jesus was the far off, you know, Mona Lisa on the painting, blonde hair, blue eyes. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't know him like that. And he delivered me the addiction to cigarettes. My, my face looked different. All that. It was amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, as, as the years went on, you know, you start to find some sin struggles, you know, and lust and sexual immorality, like a lot of men, that was a, a tough one to battle. And I heard a voice say, a letter to the Romans. I heard a voice just say that to me, a letter to the Romans. I'm like, what? I wasn't reading my Bible a lot, to be honest, you know? And I don't think I'd read all of Romans. And I read it, and I found out that I could overcome sin. Like, wow, I'm set free from sin. I'm dead to sin. I'm like learning all these things. Preachers in my life are... You know, pastors in my life are pouring this revelation out to me. Um, Holy Spirit's teaching me, like, all that, right? And, and I'm set free from sin. Well, what was going on at that season was this succubus demon would, would like, if you guys know anything about that, I won't go into, into a lot of detail, but it would, um, I'll just say, it would attack me sexually in my dreams, right? And as an unbeliever, I was just engaged in that because I was wicked, right? But now God had not just convicted me and given me a new heart. He had set me free from sin. I was like, I don't even like this stuff anymore. I don't want it. But I was confused because it was like, why is this happening to me? Like, okay, like I get like three months ago this happening to me, you know, uh, and me like wanting that. But now I know this isn't me. And it's, it's like kind of confusing as a believer, young believer, right? Well, fast forward. Um, this was about five years ago, like Pastor was saying, I'm seeking the Lord deep at night. I'm, I'm in prayer, real deep prayer. And I, uh, I, I was like thinking about how Jesus on the cross, like I didn't really get it. And I felt like I was just a knucklehead that put him on the cross. It was this weird stronghold. And I started manifesting a demon in my room. And I mean, thank God for Pastor and, and Julie and Raul who are teaching people, my mom. Christians can be demonized like yeah. just because you get saved and the Holy Spirit is, is one with your spirit doesn't mean you can't have demons in your soul and body right but I didn't know that imagine again a young believer screeching like it wasn't loud enough to wake my parents up you know but this is like it's like ah, like in my room and I'm like uh like what was that you know <laughs> I'm freaking out you know and so the Lord fathers me like right away. I stumbled upon a minister I look up to, Isaiah Saldivar. He's he has a video about how Christians can have demons, and then a scripture kick, uh, gets highlighted as I'm reading the Bible. You know, saying, uh, you know, he, he it was something to the effect of he bore our sicknesses. Uh, you know, with he bore he bore our stripes and, and, and healed us. And it was talking about healing in that passage and demons. So it was like sticking out, and the father was just fathering me. And then it was just one thing after the other. He was showing me, like, you know, it's okay. You're a Christian, but you can be demonized. Well, fast forward. I, obviously, am seeking the Lord to try to get delivered. I don't want demons, right? So I'm going to minister after minister. I'm trying to do self-deliverance. I'm reading books about it. And, and I'm trying to get set free to no avail, right? Like the woman with the blood issue, you know? I'm, I'm just, everywhere I'm going, I'm not getting set free. You know, um, I go to Texas to a very famous uh, minister. I go to Manteca, California. Some people at my church deliver me, uh, try to deliver me, my mom. I mean, goodness, I'm going through everything. And like the sister was, was saying, I mean, you come on, what did you say, seven years? I don't know how long you said you went through that ailments, but I mean, when you go through it, it squeezes you and it presses you, you know? Like in John 6, when Jesus says, eat my flesh, drink my blood, it says in John 6, 66, 666, right? It says many disciples no longer followed him, you know? Job's wife, when Job's going through hell, she, she says, curse God and die. I, I had some moments where I, I felt like saying, curse God and die, you know? When you're seeking this so much, you're like, what's going on? Like, what, what's wrong with me? Why, why, why does this have to happen to me? Why does this brother get to get delivered and this sister gets delivered? You hear all these testimonies, mm -hmm. and I went through everything you could think of, every roller coaster of doubt and then not doubting. I had backsliding seasons. And check this out, and this is a good message why you never want to open up a door to sin again in your life, right? Now, we make mistakes, but don't willfully, don't, don't go into sin. Because what I had done was I backslid, and I said, you know what? 
I'm, I'm so tired of this, you know? I was tired of where I was at in life, and I reopened that door to pornography that he had shut already, and the last state of my temple was worse than the first. So that succubus that I had, probably as an unbeliever, I mean, I don't know where it entered, but probably as an unbeliever, because I remember these, this, these attacks, I just didn't know it was a demon, you know, had increased, and more wicked uh, demons came in, right? So the person that's already struggling, hurt and broken, I'm a broken son, I don't even like that stuff, but I'm opening, opening up that door because I'm just sick and tired, right, of being sick and tired, you know what I'm saying? I had opened it up again, and this temple, I mean, I felt more demons on board, you know? Mm -hmm. Sin, like, you reap what you sow, you do, wow. you reap what you sow. If you want sin, if you want to willfully, again, we make mistakes, and God is so merciful, we're getting sanctified, but if you want to open up that door again, just know, it. like, you're going to get burned. You know, so I just want to be the testimony that you don't need to spend five years trying to go find a deliverance minister. Come on. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, just go find grace in time of need. That's, that's what we need to do. Come to your knees and say, Father, like, I'm broken. I, I don't want to open this door again. But I did, and, and he fathered me, right? And so I'm going through everything. I'm going through, am I even saved? I'm going through, I am saved. I'm ministering to people. God even used me for deliverance. I was at a, at a conference in Arizona. God tells me to go to the bathroom. There's this uh, young young man who's like uh, just chilling in front of the sink, like looking real stern. He's like, you know, hands on the on the sink, and he's like closing his eyes. I'm like, I don't know if that was the Lord. I go out, and I just feel the Holy Spirit saying, you, know, you go back in that bathroom, right? I'm like, all right. I'm like, hey, brother, this is at a Christian conference in Arizona, at the in the bathroom, and I just uh, I don't know why Holy Spirit's leading me to say this. I'm just gonna say it and get back to what Pastor wanted me to, to uh, preach. But yeah, he. He was talking about how he had seen people get shot at a young age, you know, and he had some some struggles and he was doubting what the Bible said. And I just started ministering to him and he starts manifesting a demon in a, in a Christian conference, screeching to the point where the, the leadership had to come like drag him out. So I'm going through this confusing thing where I'm demonized, looking for deliverance like like it's water and, I'm, and there's a drought. Not getting it. And then being used by the Lord. How confusing could that be? Like this sister, you know, you're having an ailment. Everyone's saying, where's your faith at? Where's this? It's like Job's friends. They're saying, oh, dude, you must, it must be because there's some secret sin. There's, there's something going on in your life. Wow. You got some curse or this or that. And it, that wasn't the case. Like, man, I was repented up. I wasn't walking it. That, I shut, re-shut the door to sexual immorality, wow. came to the Lord and said, hey, Lord, I'm reaping what I sow, but I'm begging of you for, for, for deliverance. And so, anyways, I'm just going to fast forward. There's a lot to say on that whole story, but, you know, it kind of culminated with, you know, I had uh, even a couple months ago gone for another attempt for deliverance, went to some friends in Fort Collins, and they went at it. And I don't know why, but I would go to minister after minister. It would manifest. It would be a long thing of the demons speaking out. And it, to no avail, to, to no avail would the demons leave, right? Um, and Raul, I got to shout out Raul and Elijah, and my mom. This is the three. I got to really shout out my mom, Raul, and Elijah. You know, Raul, he had, I had talked to him recently, and he said... You know, don't be like the guy that's on the rooftop. I, I forgot this idiom, but it's like, don't be the guy. On, is it a rooftop? And it's a flood? In the ocean. In the ocean. Yep. And, and he's asking God to save him. And there's a, a helicopter that passes by and a guy in a canoe. And because I was discouraged. Elijah was saying, you should go for deliverance. And I'm, I'm coming to 420 seeing that deliverance is everywhere. But it hurt. Yeah. You know when you've been asking God for something for so long where it becomes a touchy subject? And when you think about it, you're like, ah, I'm going to just keep praying. I'll keep doing my thing. I'll minister. I'm not giving in to sin anymore. But the deliverance topic, I think we'll chill on the, on the deliverance topic. I think we'll chill on talking about me getting my lung healed, right? I don't want to talk about it. You know, I love the Lord. I, on paper, I'm saying, all right, I believe God is good. I believe he wants me to be healed. But there's, and the faith thing, I'm so happy you were talking about faith because he taught me, man. I'm just going to jump to the end of the conclusion and just say it because I feel like I'm about to pop. I got delivered of a demon, family. I got delivered of a demon. Jesus Christ delivered me. He delivered me, guys. And this is what I learned. If I learned anything, if I learned anything, if you want to have faith, this sounds cliche and hallmark, but it's so true. If you want to have faith, you need to know that he means it when he says he loves you. Come on. Jesus said, what father amongst you, if you ask him for bread, are you, is he going to give you a scorpion? An right. evil father, Hitler, if he had a kid, I don't know if he had a kid, but it, Hitler would have probably given him some bread, right? Is Hitler good? No, he's evil. So how much, how much more Yahweh? 
Yeah. How much more the Father of lights, who says in him is no shadow of turning. He's not like deliverance. I'm going to give Elijah deliverance. I'm going to give, you know, so and so deliverance. Alexander, uh, I'm going to hop over you, you know? <laughs> that's not, that's not, he's not double minded like we are. So double mindedness means you're not looking at the Father because his mind is single. It, it doesn't matter if it's been five years, seven years, seven days around Jericho. You know, I was telling Pastor after I got delivered, and I'll get to that story, but Elijah, the prophet Elijah, tells his servant when he's, he's crying out for rain, he says, go check for rain. It's seven times. What's seven in the Bible? It's completion. Yep. Boom. Stamp of approval. Your seven might be ten years. Your seven might be two weeks. Come Your on. seven, but just keep going. Yeah, it's a process. Exactly. And what did he do in the meantime? He got rid of, okay, so sec so reopening the door to sin got, t got delivered in that process. I would, he didn't just care about my deliverance. He cared about my deliverance. You know what I'm saying? He cared about the sanctification in the process. I have had encounters with God that I, you don't get from just living life like normal like he gave me some job like testimonies it's like in job i was just reading it it says job says at the end of his season you know if you guys know anything about job he had satan had uh, afflicted him and he wasn't healed and his friends were telling him it's because you're a sinner and he was actually a righteous man he was confused about that and god eventually heals him and, and job says my ears have heard about you but now my eyes have seen you, right? Mm. And so what I can say about it is you guys, you need to see him. You need to know that he's not joking. He really loves you. Like when I got delivered, so I'm going to get to the story now. I feel the Holy Spirit highlighting this. Um, we're right here. It's the craziest manifestations ever. It was about a four-hour deliverance. Praise God. Thank you for Pastor, you know, and, and Julie and Raul and, and your guys' daughter. They really ministered, Desiree and Tina. Thank you. Um, and I'm here just cra crazy manifestations. And in my, I didn't tell you guys this much, but, you know, demons are speaking. But in my spirit, I mean, I'm obviously there and I'm feeling all this. And I'm just saying, Lord, I, can't, I don't want to go through another process where I don't get delivered. I'm crying out to him with everything wow. I can. I'm like the father that was crying out for his son who wasn't delivered. You know, I believe, help my unbelief. I'm like, I believe, Lord. I've searched my heart. I don't know anything that would make it so that I don't know anything in my life that would make me some wolf that's like in sheep's clothing that doesn't deserve deliverance. Like, I'm righteous, Lord, by your blood, by your grace. Like, I don't get why I'm not delivered. I believe. I don't get this. And you know what happens? I feel a cluster of demons leave my body. Wow. Yes. I, I feel them leave my body. They're like, like a lot of people will talk about this. Like, you feel where they used to be. It was like right here. You, I felt where they used to be, right? And this phrase, I couldn't get out of my head right after. You know, so first off, I just want to say the Holy Spirit fell on me. So the demon comes out. Holy Spirit falls on me. I'm speaking in tongues, singing, sobbing like a baby. You know, I'm like, because because it, it, a son just got delivered. I've been crying out for this for a long time, right? And and I can't get this phrase out of my head. He, he loves me, man. Like, he loves me. The, he really loves me. Like, I get it. Like, there was a little bit where I just needed to, like, like, you believe it in your head until you see it, right? Like Abraham believed things that were not yet. Like, okay, he loves me on paper. He loves me on paper. But I found out and experienced. My ears hurt, but my eyes saw and my tongue tasted. He's not, he wasn't deaf. So anyone that's going through hell in this room, needing their faith boosted, just know he's not deaf. He's, he hears and he sees. You know, the children of Israel, they groaned and cried out. And then God sent to deliver Moses, right? So he, and he's already sent the capital D deliverer, Jesus, yeah. right? Wow. And we're called, they don't anyone, let no one in this room think if you're going through something like, well, it's just the process and I just have to deal with it. And this is how it is. Like, no, that's not it. I don't care if there's a long period. I don't know why it's, for some people it's this long, that long, that long, but he doesn't change his mind. We don't, we look at things in time and we look at things like with our mental, like just know like he loves you, right? So that's basically it. That's the story. Amen. Amen. I, uh, just stay up here, brother. I, I just, like I said, here again, I want to build your faith because you have to understand that, that the same resurrection power that Jesus Christ had to raise him from the dead. It's the same power that you and I carry. Wow. Yes. Yeah. You and I carry. And there's not one man of God. Yeah. Right? You know, you know, there's not one man of God. There's not woman, one woman of God. There is God. Wow. Yes. There's one Holy Spirit. Right? There's, there's, there's one 
call. And so this is where we're at. This is, this is where we're at. And so this is what we're called to do. Right? And so Matthew chapter 10, he says that he called his disciples and gave them power to heal the sick, to cast out demons. Mm -hmm. Right? And so this is where we're at. 2021, God is the same yesterday yeah. and today and forever. And we got to understand it. And so even with my brother here, I mean, it was awesome because what ended up, it was good four hours. Yeah. But God, God, God came through. And you know what? It, it's, it's, you said thank God for, for being here. You said thank God for being here. But it's, that is a, that is an attribute of God. Wow. Right? God is long suffering. God wow. is patient. Right? God is kind. God, God, he loves, right? He says that love covers a multitude of sin. Yes. And so all that together, it's basically God showing up, the God in us, the God in, you know, the, the ministers. And, and so even you even got a prophetic word, you know, right before the, before the end, right? When that name had popped up, we had somebody call. It was, it was my wife and she had a prophetic word. And, and how did that affect you? Yeah, well, that only confirmed what I was buzzing in my head. Wow. He loves me. He loves me. Like, I was freaking out, honestly. Yes. It's like, you're going through this for so long, and you're like, he really loves me. And wow. then you affirmed that, and I really appreciate that, sister. Like, that word really kind of made that even firmer. Like, he loves you. You said, I, I can keep getting this impression that the Father loves you, you know? Wow. And you even gave a, and I think this is important, when you get deliverance, having that prophetic word after the deliverance to give yeah. guidance and vision, because it gave me vision. The devil tries to say, did you get delivered and this and that? It's really dumb, because lies are so, it's like saying, this is really green. This is a green ceiling. Well, no, it's white, but if someone tells you it's green long enough, you're like, dude, is that green? Maybe that's a green ceiling. No, it's a white ceiling, and I got delivered, all right? So shut up. Yeah. Right? So... But it helped me because it said, you were saying, like, you have to fight. And, and, but, but the big thing that stuck out above all was really just like, wow, he loves you, you know. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, and so this, is, this is the most powerful thing that, that we got to understand is there again. The forsaking of the assembly of the saints. Wow. Yeah. We got we got people that prophesy. We got people that cast out devils. Wow. We got people that heal the sick. We got people, you know, do surgical spiritual surgery, and what that what that looks like. It's 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 all strategic. And, and where the where the Lord is showing me is it's like a symphony. Wow. You know, God is using one with a break, one singing in the spirit, one wow. one just just all of these in tandem, and 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 like I said, even like you know. There's no distance in the spirit, right? We have one Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so even like like my wife called, she was getting, she was picking up stuff. She's, you know, we're 10 minutes from Boulder and we're here doing a deliverance and she gets a, she gets a word from God, calls, begins to prophesy, wow. confirms, and guess what? Just and and just I mean everything working together. So it's 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 necessary. And what you have, like I said, is not for you, wow. it's for the body of Christ. Good. Good. Right? And even even go for it. Go ahead. Did you, did you deal with rejection? Mm. Well, um, I would say like as it pertained to deliverance, it was tough because I'd go to like different ministers and like they'd say, oh, there's some sin that you're not telling us about, or oh, this or that. So I would say in the in the process of healing. Amen. And so, even even at this time, brother, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. Bless you. Thank you for for that. That's, that is so faith building. Um, as brother Alexander was was giving his testimony, I just keep I 